All right, what's up, everybody? This is episode six of Bits and Beats. We have a special guest today, uh, Diego Curiel. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. We've been friends since my first open mic in comedy. So I'm really excited to have him on to just share some stories. We get real on this. It's like Taxi Cab Confessions, if you ever watched that on HBO late at night when you were a little kid. But um, first of all, I want to introduce this podcast with a bunch of my gear got stolen, so I am just making do. We got I got my camera, and um, thankfully, good friend and funny comedian Melissa McGillicuddy, shout out over there, is uh, letting me use her gear to record this until I can um, get my stuff back. So anyways, on a positive note, guys, check out the podcast. This is our sixth episode. We're going strong. Our producer, Ronnie Whaley, is in the Philippines right now. Um, he got abducted. I'm just kidding. He's over there on vacation or something. I actually, to be honest, I don't know why you're over there, Ronnie, but, um, so I'm doing this one today. We're just recording solo, the intros and outros, but that being said, check out the podcast on YouTube and Spotify and as well as exclusive content on Patreon. I've got some tour dates coming up. And if you want to catch those, these are the dates, August 29th at the Ford Amphitheater in LA. And that one's going to be a fun Filipino showcase. We got Rex Navaretti. Um, it's produced by Apple D app. We got a uh, Filipino rapper, Ruby Ibarra, AJ Rafael. Uh, the list goes on. Kaba Modern, dance and hip hop dance. Um, October 9th, I'll be in Chicago. And October 14th and 15th in Las Vegas. So check out those dates. I'll put them on my website as well as posting them on social media. Check out the socials for the podcast. We're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everything, YouTube, uh, Bits and Beats podcast. Um, let's get into the episode a little bit. This one, we talk about some stories of Diego and I starting out on the road. And uh, when we used to bark, which means... You kind of go into the streets and promote with flyers, getting people into the shows. Yeah, just some of the first shows that we did together. And uh, we get real with some of the things that uh, Diego and I have been through when I jumped into the river and, and saved his life. True story, but you're going to hear that in the podcast. And uh, we try to get Diego canceled for a joke that he makes on the podcast. What's the joke? You just got to listen and find out. All right, everybody, enjoy this episode. I enjoyed recording it, so enjoy. We're here with Diego. Oh, I said his name before doing his intro. What the hell? Oops. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful day. We got Diego Curiel, and a uh, little bit of background of Diego. He's a very funny comedian. And um, he's this guy who's been my friend for literally 10 years. We can talk about how we met on this, Diego, in a second. But one thing I would can introduce about Diego is he's always posting videos of him and I together. And he puts really weird background music to it. So, like, our friendship is so weird. Like, when people see the stories, it's like we're either in some kind of, like, partnership or, like, I'm kidnapped by you. Or we're like about to like, I don't know, do some kind of like Roma Romeo and Juliet thing where we kill ourselves together with the background music you have because it's always emo. Anyways, what a weird intro. Guys, give it up to Diego Curiel. Diego, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, Ronnie looks shocked. Ronnie's like, what kind of intro? <laughs> I think he's no. more shocked at your Wi-Fi, Diego. Oh, <laughs> damn. Okay. So tell me about your day, Diego. We're going to play some background music. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I walk the dogs. I wrote jokes. And now uh, you're playing piano and uh, interviewing me. So this is a good day. It's a good day. How was the dog walk? It was good. It's, all, it's never bad. It's, it keeps me healthy and the dog from getting obese. So it's very... Mm, that's soothing. Dude, dogs and, um, can get fat and COVID. Like, it's a real world. Dogs have anxiety now, too. Yeah, this is a true story. Diego and I literally walked his sister's dog yesterday together with my parents. Oh. <laughs> end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of the story. Uh, oh, well, well, okay, we can just say more. We can say more. Where we walked the dog with my dad, and my dad was giving Diego just tips on how to take care of a dog, and all of them were not good. He was like, oh, your dog, your dog has anxiety you should give him cbd <laughs> this isn't a terrible thing but 
That's so what funny. else did he say, Diego? He said something about he, dog poop. He said something about dog. Oh no, he ste- uh, we stepped over that poop and he said that doesn't look like dog poop. That looks like human poop on the. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, right, it, was we downtown, start- it was downtown Sacramento, so it could have been human poop. It looked like human poop. All right, well, we can start there. We can talk about the dog park and all these things. Um, yeah, you've been taking care of your, your sister's dog, yeah? <laughs> yeah. The, well, there's two of them, but the other one's too crazy. Like, she won't listen at all, so mm-hmm. I don't take her out. Yeah, and has that been uh, – well, one, I remember – I know I always give you uh, give you some – Give you some shit. I was like, I'm trying to make this a cleaner podcast, but I can't. <laughs> he's not. Look at his face. He's smiling. He's holding back. I really <laughs> can't. Well, a- well, how much of this? I don't know how much of this to say about you and how you want, you know, how to explain Diego. But we did, uh, when we got there, you were waving at a girl that you had seen at the dog park the other day. Because I just said hi. That's like literally, I'm like, oh, I recognize you see how that defensive bit. you got right there? <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't J- say J- whether you were hitting on her or anything. JR tries to infer that I like walking the dog because it picks up girls. But I will say, uh, walking JR gets the same results because, <laughs> whoa, what kind of breed is he? Purebred <laughs> Filipino. You do say that. <laughs> what kind of dog? Uh, he's a, he's half Chihuahua, and we don't know what the other half. Maybe Jack Russell, but he doesn't look like JR saw him. He's like well behaved, doesn't have the bug eyes. He's like a thicker. Hispanic dog. He is. Yeah, he's a very healthy dog. Frankie. Yeah. We can say his name on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, we can say it. We can bleep it out. He's looking yeah. at me right now. He's like, who brought my name up? Yeah. Oh, is he there? Oh, that's yeah. cool. I he's on that. the couch listening to your sweet uh, piano. He's like very well behaved and stuff too. Yeah, JR was like, did you trade him? Are you like Caesar Milan? And I'm like, I guess. I understand. It was pretty impressive, man. That dog was, <laughs> was very well behaved. Um, and he did have anxiety. That was real, huh? Yeah, that is real. I didn't even know that was possible. I've never, of all the dogs I've seen, I've never seen one like, he'll, he used to whimper during car rides and he used to mm-hmm. like, I've never seen a simp dog, but he'll like, if you put emotional <laughs> music, he'll vibe with it. I'm like, okay. Yeah. He's a vibe dog for sure, man. He's a vibe dog. Um, yeah. And so I guess a little more about Diego. We've been, um, we've been friends for 10 years, man. Yeah, what day did we meet? Tell Ronnie. Tell Ronnie. And, and, and we me. met Ronnie. We met on Valentine's Day. Wow, 2011. Yeah. It was my first wow. set ever, and we can. He- I want to hear your side of it though, Diego, because the way I would tell it is, it was my first set ever, and I was writing jokes at the sandwich shop next to the comedy club, and then you approached me and said something, and, and that's kind of how it started. Did we? I thought. I mean, did we meet after I saw your set? I thought I saw your set first. This feels like a couple on like the honeymoon game. Yeah, <laughs> like we just lost. <laughs> I was like, no, I said it was when we met. <sighs> we're gonna fight on the car. Jr. is gonna send me to the couch right now. He's like, I don't even want to see you. Oh, you? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, Dude, that, that's hilarious. No, I think it was because beforehand, I think you had said that you were a comic and you saw that I was writing jokes. So we talked for a little bit. But we didn't talk that much. And then after my set, you came up and said it. you thought it was funny. Yeah. Well, what what was funny about that, JR messed up a joke on stage. But even his first time, he like was like, oh, we can't do that. Rewind. And he beatboxed like it was a rewinding tape. And it hella <laughs> made me laugh. And I'm yeah. like, oh, he's funny. And then he, I just, uh, we hung out. And I'm like, oh, he's a cool dude. And yeah. Yeah. And then we've, we've kind of ever since then um, been able to like, go on the road together like i feel like you and i you introduced me to jimmy as a third friend in our friend group which we sacrilegiously call the trinity yeah you call ourselves the trinity because jimmy is the father i think i'm the, am i the son you're the, are you son. the son I, it, yeah and, it's, and you're uh, the holy ghost yeah it's two handsome filipinos <laughs> and a moderately decent looking guy with asperger's and we used to <laughs> that like my first trips ever on the road doing stand-up were with diego and we would like bark oh, cool. uh like try to try to promote the shows on the street and give flyers to people but it was also kind of an excuse for diego and i to try to talk to girls <laughs> uh, i when when you're the uglier looking friend you know who has to do the talking i would give jr the fla- <laughs> no, flyer diego would like diego forced me to be more confident with women because he would push me on them he'd be like go talk to this one go what? talk to her <laughs> You, you know, I'm what's like, what? Oh, like I'm being pushed from my back, like onto them. And then 
Now I have to start some conversation because I'm awkwardly in front of them with tickets. And they're like, you want to come to a show? Well, they work. Is that how you remember it, Diego? I never knew. Did it work? He, he was shy, but then like put the guitar in front of him or like one drink and he'd be like, oh, so sup, girl. And I'm like, It's this very guy. true. I was so shy and so socially awkward. Like this forced me out of my shell, like promoting shows with Diego. Yeah. Or like after a show, I think I was, I'd be very shy and nervous and then I would get, I, and then so I would, and then I would drink a little bit and all of a sudden I felt like I was James Bond. <laughs> And this is funny because having Diego on here, I'm like way too comfortable sharing stories. <laughs> but I'm trying to think of like people that would hear this that might not like to hear this. <laughs> you always cut it out. <laughs> yeah, that's I've cut true. Out a lot of I know. I know. Ra- Diego, Ronnie, and I always talk about how like I-, I feel like we get through half of the episode and we're like, "Is this usable?" <laughs> and, and this usable? Yeah, happens a lot frequently. Ronnie's funny because he sounded like a hitman right now. He's like, "Don't worry about it, boss. It'll it'll go away. <laughs> yeah. I got a trunk." It'll go the dead body in the Hudson. Got it. It'll be cut so fast. (laughs) (laughs) But Diego, how would you describe that? Ronnie asked if it worked, our promoting. Like what was our like what was our percentages out there? Well, that one time we brought a lot of people remember when we we promoted a a racially it had a racial name, a show, and at, at first they said the, uh, one of the comics was like, oh, there's a lot of ticket sales. And then they said, actually, there's not ticket sales. And me and him went to the college and we got like a good amount of people out. Maybe 20 Was that Boise? Out. Yeah, Boise. Yeah, we were doing a show in Boise, Idaho. I mean, do you care if we say the name, Diego? No, not at all. It's a, I, it's a racially charged show. So we took over a show that our friend used to produce. For We took it over for one show and then it ended. But... Yeah. um. Our friend used to produce a show. It was a Filipino and Mexican show called Flips and Beaners. <laughs> <laughs> what a different time it used to be, huh? Yeah, 2013. Oh, but you know my what? God. Like, yeah. if we did that show today, so fast, it would be canceled, canceled or we'd have people protesting outside. But back then, it was like, yeehaw, flip some beaners. Let's go watch you know, that. You know what, though? People would come out with no mat. Like, it would always pack out. Even the one we did at last packed out. Like, that show yeah. would bring people out, and they would, it was all different races, and they'd just be down to vibe. And it's like, for sure. Would. Like, that was the thing. It was, it would always sell out, I think, because it was like a different, like, show. Very mm-hmm. charged title. Uh-huh. That. Well, was it by um, Filipinos and like, yeah, Mexicans? Was, uh, he, he's a Filipino. He's he's really funny. And yeah, he, the he, guy who created the show is our good friend, and yeah. he's, he was Filipino. He is Filipino. <laughs> he was. He damn was. <laughs> well, he, it <laughs> sounds like he either died or something or happened a, to his race. Had an operation to make him white or something. Yeah, we those were our first shows on the road, right? Diego was all the Flips and Beaner shows. I think though, yeah. <laughs> what a the, weird way to start <laughs> comedy those, and start a podcast. And then we did military bases, breweries, wineries, like me and him. Yeah, we did. Uh, so Diego kind of took me on the road in the beginning. And like he would book a gig for like a military base and ask me if I wanted to come. And remember that military base where we almost like thought we were going to be trapped in the woods? Yeah. He, uh, well, we thought. Yeah, talk about I, that a little bit. Yeah, um, Jr. We were in his forerunner, and he took us on a live range, like where they were doing like explosions and shit. Like we were near the live range of a military base, and Holy but shit. we went in the woods, and we thought we were lost, and the GPS wasn't working. Yeah, and he's like, "You're eating our whole food supply. Like we've been here ten minutes." <laughs> yeah, we had like we thought. So we get to this base, Yolan military base, or something in Yolan, right, Diego? Yeah. Do you remember what it was called? Uh, 400 Leggett military. 400 Leggett military base. And the GPS takes us to the back roads, which is like going through a dirt road in the forest. I'm like, this can't be right. And like, I lose data and reception. And we see signs that say live firing rounds, testing, like, they're testing like where they're shooting, like, dropping bombs and shooting guns and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, Diego, I think we're going to die here. (laughs) And, and so we don't know how to get out of there. And I'm like, we're just riding around for a while. And I'm like, we might have to prepare to be here for a few days, Diego. I don't know. And all we have, I think, is like Skittles and like soda and Sour water. Sour Patch. Yeah. Sour Patch Kids. I look over and Diego is like halfway through all of it. <laughs> like, do you, Diego, this you guys is. have that? You guys like 13? I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, because we were 13 year olds in this story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we also, had it because too, what? Oh, I what? was heavier too. Let's pre- let's preface. I don't I'm, even think that was it. Was that what it was? I think I it was just because like that's like the road food that I would eat even yeah. now. Like if I was driving to a show that was like six oh, hours away, that makes sense. Yeah, it's like salt and vinegar chips, 
Uh, Sour Patch Kids and Powerade. That's my go-tos. And a protein bar. Yeah. I like a steak or yeah. like a ribs. <laughs> no, a yeah. He busts out Just ribs. snack on some, you need some the gloves. ribs. Snack on some ribs. Gloves. Driving. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> well, that show was really fun, though, too. Like, I think, Diego, um, I feel like you and I, when we started out, like, we went on the road pretty early. Yeah. Like, a lot of people were kind of staying in Sacramento, which is totally cool. But, like, I think we, I had a healthy sense of, like, we got to get out and see what our jokes are like in these random towns yeah you know because sacramento is like in midtown especially maybe like it's kind of liberal but we would go out to these other communities that were both conservative and liberal or like mixed races and stuff so what was what was, what was it like actually maybe um how, how maybe we should jump into a song okay let's see let's listen to this beat let's listen to this beat diego what do you think the song should be about so far i mean we've talked about where you ate all of our food <laughs> In the in I'm the car when we're trying to survive, as a, as a fat inconsiderate. Oh, no, this that's not you at all. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll do something where we'll portray you in a good light then. So, well, I was gonna say too because we were talking about like uh, different times, like comedy mm-hmm. and all that, and I'd like to hear. I know you and me talked about it, but like I. As a comic, I talk about race. I like I'm a brown dude in like America. I talk about whatever, and then I I I recently was telling Jr. Somebody was like. Hey, a joke you did was racist, but it it wasn't about race. I just mentioned like uh, a race, but it Mm. was more about internet. And they were like, you should educate yourself and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was like, I I was like, I'm a brown dude in America. You're a white person telling me like, that's racist. Like you're telling me. Do you want to say the joke on here or is that something you want to keep I, I'll say it and then Ronnie can judge me. Yeah, we or, can do the judgment here. This is the judgment. We sure. can do the judgment. Be- because Cancelable okay. joke or funny. <laughs> okay. so the <laughs> Or ju- both. The ju- but then I talked to JR. He gave me good. He's like, it's not. I don't think it is. Do it. Then I talked to our, our good friend who's like a super smart lady. She said, do it. And it's, uh, so this is the joke. The joke is. Uh, I like dating websites. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's ChristianSingles.com, BlackPeopleMeet.com, or my personal favorite, AfricanPeopleMeet.com. Love is only two clicks away. <laughs> See, he's laughing. I don't know if he's shocked like, or he's Yeah, laughing. I think that's... I Okay, it's funny, like, watching... It's like watching sports footage and then breaking it down. <laughs> I was like, dear God, please laugh. I, he was let's like, do this. He was let's cracking do this. it. But, but it's no. like, it's not a... Yeah. yeah. No, no, Time no, to I break know. down with Diego's joke. <laughs> Is it racist and cancelable or funny? <laughs> so let's break, let's break this down. Ronnie, you laughed. What are, what are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's tough because like um, the the Asian accent is kind of can- cancelable right now, right? If yeah. you're not Asian yeah. and you you know you do an Asian accent, people yeah. really are like, "Yo, what what you know generation yeah. are you from?" What's, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. So the clicking thing, I don't know. Not a lot of people do that anymore. <laughs> But, I, but uh, okay, all right. But look, but Ronnie's look. more focused on the technical, the logistics of the joke. You know, you might need to up, up, upgrade it, update it. You know it. what though? But I've done that. I've had African people in the audience, and they've never complained. It's always a white person being like, you know, yeah. you can't. But it, there's no, there's no like you know when you were like being like if I did a Mexican accent, that's how my parents talk. Like you said, like if you're not a, like. You could tell when someone's being like I don't even think that had to do with race more than like it's Wait, the sorry. internet. The person who got mad did they get mad at what did they get mad at specifically that you said they, like, black they just or said African? it's racist. No, they just said that it's racist and that it's misinformed and ed- educated. That's what basically was. Oh, I don't think that's true. Yes. Yeah, I don't think that it's racist. I understand that maybe it's a sensitive time to watch out for stuff, but oh yeah. Overall, I don't think that the joke is racist. I, in my two cents, is that maybe they were coming from a place of thinking that they were helping you and like mm-hmm. protecting you. Oh no, yeah. But realistically, the joke was fine. I just, I don't know. As a, that being I said, feel- should you be canceled? <laughs> yes. Damn. The verdict is out. Diego has out. been canceled he on this podcast. Though, so now this I, now I wanna. Laugh. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant to make you laugh. I'm like, damn, he laughed that though. Too. Oh, <laughs> damn. I just wanted to know in a pit because because uh, all my friends I respect that are comics were like, mm-hmm. no, do that joke. That joke's not. No, I think it's funny. I think it's yeah. funny. I I just think that well, that's always the thing, right? The person. When it's like a white person getting mad at you, you you start to wonder why they're actually. What's the motive of them getting mad? Is it for? Oh no, it's a constructive you? place. But I don't think I don't think I'm missing. For I think it's like different. Like I have Aspergers, and I'm a brown dude in America. My perspective is way different than like my social cue. Le- Jr. will tell. Like he picks up on my tics or my weird, like uh, social understanding sometimes. Yeah. Diego has Asperger's, is what he's trying to say. This is, I just truly has Asperger's. <laughs> yeah, that's my interpreter. He's interpreting yeah. my emotions. Well, I'll say this, my Diego. Emotional- our friendship has probably not prepared me for just having intelligent conversations about autism and Asperger's because we just roast each other. So oh, yeah. in my mind, it's just like, oh yeah, we can like fuck around and joke about Asperger's. But if I go out into the world and I'm on a podcast and I'm joking about that stuff, I feel like I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> I, I, because of how relaxed we are about it you know what though like the, he is true though me and him will roast each other but like uh, like he saw me yesterday for the first time without my beer 10 minutes of roasting he's like i can't get used to this and it was just, it wasn't I'm even getting... roasting though i was just trying to figure out your face <laughs> like, i was just not used to it anymore and i was you just have trying lips? to figure out is that what it, he's like you have lips what's when on? you're outside of my apartment with your dog i was literally trying to figure out what is this man doing in our courtyard <laughs> <laughs> and am I a Karen because I'm worried about my my apartment? But uh, oh wait, what was I gonna ask you? Oh my god, um, Asperger's. Oh, sh- oh, is Asperger's still a thing? Isn't it like autism now? It's like just they're all branched under one. So there's different people have said it. It's a non-existent thing. Like it's all one big spectrum. And also too, like it's been referred to as little genius syndrome, which makes me laugh. That's dope. Uh, but like, um, genius. for the most part, it's like, yeah, one big spectrum of like, I'll get, I'll get two reactions. Like people will be excited or people will be like, that's not a thing now. And I'm like, calm down, bro. Like, like Pluto, I was born the in Pluto the- of the spectrum. <laughs> Elon Musk has Asperger's. Yeah. That's a rich, it. quirky best. And that's a rich, quirky guy <laughs> saying I got like, you know what? But Diego's yours helps you have this confidence with women. I've talked about this to you where it's like. I'll see Diego go up to a woman and the confidence that he has to say the crazy thing that he says like like to this person makes them think, wow, this guy is either rich or has a huge cock. <laughs> and I know I said I wasn't going to talk about cocks on this, but it's we're there. That's funny. We're there. And, got, uh, and, then, and, then, <laughs> and then back in the day, like, because like, Diego would talk to a woman and then, and then somehow they go to your back when you had a minivan, Diego. And he would drive them away in a minivan. They're like, this must be one of those like CEO things where they just like want to still feel poor. You know, you know what's hilarious? You know what's funny? JR made me laugh. He's like, I'm impressed by you because anyone that can pull a woman in a Toyota Privia, that's impressive. A Tesla, that's easy. But a Toyota yeah. Privia, that's a fucking- Seriously. Diego's an underdog yeah. story every day. It's not like we're, I don't know. I'm not trying to reveal all your stuff, but like, we'll just be at a bar. I'll turn around for one second or blink. I open my eyes. He is like the space between the girl and him. It's like, he's already gone past all the like usual social boundaries that you would need to be that close to talk to a woman, but it's not bad. It's like this confidence thing. And he goes in and they're comfortable. And then exchange numbers and stuff well are you I comfortable att- with me talking about that diego and uh, on valentine's day 10 years ago i attended jr's pickup women seminar and it was uh, this very- is a fake seminar it's not real <laughs> i just want people to know that diego always makes up these stories and i have to like fact check my conversations with you i'll tell real stories but when i'm in public i i i i'm silly but he did what he wore that to the <laughs> seminar that's his this is true yeah i wore this to the seminar and I just started out. You tired of being a virgin? <laughs> Join That's my it. seminar, dude. But, you, um, you'd be surprised how many dudes threw money once he said that. It was like, help, <laughs> help me. <laughs> yeah, our biggest uh, donor was Justin Rivera. So. <laughs> hit, hit the start of his thing on my when he was a guest here. 
Was him just talking about how he's been a virgin for a year or something? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. So I hope that guy got laid since I do magic, but that's the real magic you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we got a beat today, and uh, let's listen to kind of what we have prepared, and we're going to drop vocals over it with our guest, Diego Curiel, based on this interview so far. This is the beat. I don't want to, I was trying to make it not about dicks or sex, but I want to do something on the spectrum with like how Diego's just good at talking to girls. Cause you spectrum. know, you know what, Ronnie, one of the biggest compliments yet slaps in the face where JR saying a lot of people say you're, you talk to women out of your league and a lot of people are correct. <laughs> <laughs> All the girls Diego have dated. It's just like, it's incredible, man. Amazing. You wouldn't. They're always yeah. some crazy. It's a hot girl who's kind of crazy. That's like who you've ended up with. Yeah. It's the best. Like guy. we helped the girl move. We helped the girl move, and then she was like, "What was she saying? Like she was gonna get us pizza and beer?" Oh yeah, Jr. holds a grudge to this day. She's I hold like, a grudge she to this never day because she pizza. lied. We went up three flights of stairs. <laughs> we moved her entire life into this new apartment, and she was like, "Yeah, guys, I think it's just kind of late. Like I don't know if we can do the pizza and beer thing today." And I'm like, "Well, are we ever gonna do it?" And then she broke up with Diego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's i was so like well that's, that's kind horrible. of fucked up yeah that's hilarious. um i don't know what to, i really don't know what to sing on this one diego what should we sing about i think you're afraid to <laughs> i'm afraid to <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you're not you're not wrong man <laughs> all right you're not wrong okay well i'm gonna add a little bit of reverb reverb okay oh shit wow. oh my gosh okay but, let's do less reverb. but see look ronnie every time you say like I'm good at picking up women. Ronnie's like, I don't see it. But like with Jared, <laughs> I don't easy. say that. No, no. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, Ronnie. Let's no, let's let's move but, this back on Ronnie so I don't no, get canceled. But with, but with Jr., like you could see, we we did a Zoom show, and Jr. said I sang at an early age. I played sports, and one of the comedians was like, "How is your dick ever dry, bro?" He's like, "You're just to the me." Walk yeah, remember oh, yeah. Ellis said that. He's like, "Jr., how are, how are you ever not?" With a girl, like. He's well, like, I told you, I did a year of like celibacy, man. You yeah, told so me, yes, but do <laughs> I believe? Do we believe it, Ronnie? Do we believe it? <laughs> did you hear? What, did you hear what Ronnie said? Diego? What did he say? I said I did a year of celibacy. Ronnie's like, so did Justin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Not by choice. Not by choice. That's Not by choice. Oh my gosh. That's funny. That's so funny. All right, I really don't know what the song is about yet. I don't have anything. Diego, is there anything? How about this? Is there anything positive about the spectrum that you want to sing about and talk about today? Because uh, I feel like it's such a sensitive line that if I'm picking it, I'm for sure going to get canceled. I don't color in. And I want to be lines, sensitive. So it's to, okay. You can color where you can go out or in a, the line. Uh, uh, no, it, it makes you creative. I will say that it makes you look at things different from a analytical and creative point. And so it's called like, Little Genius. Well, that's what I heard. That's supposedly, I don't know if it's that towards that or the whole spectrum, but yeah. Can I call you a little genius with a big penis? <laughs> penis. I totally said this was not going to be about that's, sex. That, that's actually Einstein's legal uh, nickname. Oh. I can't say How about this? Why don't we just record that? See what it sounds like. And if we don't, and then we can do an alternate take that's clean. Dude, you sound like a holy you uh, you sound like a holy entity right now with the reverb and all that in the background. <laughs> all right, let's try this. Jalapenos. Jalapenos. <laughs> all right, there's gonna be a little bit of a. Ooh, ooh, he's got a little genius, but a big penis. He's on the spectrum. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> How did that feel? Did that feel right? It felt great. I have a theme song. If 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 uh, if women are ever like, hey, can you send me a clip of your stand up? I'll send this too. I'll be like, hey, I'm Play just that in putting the song. it out. Play that in the yeah. car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <In the> minivan. <laughs> I don't have a minivan. Yeah, the anymore. minivan. Yeah, That's now what do you have, Diego? So I'm still I, on reverb, you guys. I have but. a hella Mexican car. I have a tinted Impala. I have a very oh. Mexican. Wow. Yeah. That is Dude, on the nose. Your car, I'm going to add some harmonies to this in a second. I know I sound like I'm uh, the church thing still. 
But your car, it's a perfect example of you because it's very Hispanic, Latino on the outside. <laughs> but the inside is like the nerd, like video game. Like you have oh, all these yeah. stickers it's, it's, inside. It's a white woman haven. There's like affirmation stickers in there. There's like a <laughs> white woman haven. <laughs> yeah, like we, were in, we were in the car with some girls and they were, just, they were just having the time of their life. Oh, my God, this sticker and this sticker and this sticker. I was like, wow, Diego. Yeah. He has a plan. All right, Who let's cut I forgot Denise. how it goes. <laughs> little genius, little genius, little genius. I'm gonna try a harmony. Ooh, ooh, he's got a little genius, but a big penis. He's on the sp- <laughs> big penis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, there you go. Little, little genius. <laughs> Let's try that. Ooh, ooh, he's got a I'm gonna play this at my birthday next month. I'm gonna play <laughs> the whole birthday. I'm gonna have this in the background. <laughs> on loop. Yeah, on infinity loop. loop. I don't care if there's kids at that party. There's a good, that song is playing. I think that's. Uh, I think that's good. Let me see. Little genius, but a big penis. He's on the spectrum. I just see Ronnie going. Edit it out. Edit it out. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> At this point, it's consistent with all the episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know how we. I don't even about, know why. We were talking about yeah. like at the end of a season that we would do like an album. But so far, yes. so far they're all sex related. So sure. <laughs> Which is well, they haven't. Pretty consistent for the, my stand up lately too. <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh, oh my so, gosh. It's brand. weird. Is it weird that since I got baptized, my act got dirtier? <laughs> is that weird? That's just a rhetorical question, I guess. No one said anything. The, it's the devil getting out, like sweating out there. <laughs> yeah, it's the demon. I feel like it makes gone. sense. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, wait. No, I'm really interested in this. Why do you think it makes sense? Because I, I don't know. I can't figure it out. Feels like it would be the contrast. It'd be the direct contrast. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think you're so right because for me, it's like I don't feel like I feel too constricted in a box of like you're just Christian and you're just this and this is how you have to be. So it's almost like this other side of myself that still needs to be a comic and like be able to say like crazy, ridiculous things. Yeah, it's like you're speaking outside of your box. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But uh, Diego, how are you feeling about this song? I feel great. You just made a theme song. I can't wait till it comes out. I appreciate it. I know. I, I gotta, I'll touch up some of the things on it so it's cleaner. Not the content, but the actual you know, quality. You know what's weird? Because, because we said about that, like like me, like people, if people complain about the content, but you had two songs earlier on that oh, sorry, like, could go that way with a crowd, but you'll do them if the crowd's feeling it. Uh, JR does two. Can I, the Our Father, Our oh, in yeah. Kevin. And then, Our father who art and Kevin. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, and then uh, and beauty girlfriend. And, but yeah. you do those songs do as those. the crowds feel it. But that, I but never that, recorded them or put them out. But I'll do them live sometimes when I feel like it's a rowdy show and the crowd is like wants to go take it to the furthest level. Yeah, that makes sense. Then I'll do it. Yeah, it's really man. cool to watch them. Yeah, because oh, that, cool. I'm Thanks, like, man. oh, the, if it wasn't a handsome, adorable, talented Filipino singing this, like if I did that, like the Our Father. Canceled. No, like, you can totally do it. Your, no, I can't your vibe it. on stage is very likable, though. And it's like, I think that's why as well. It's you, ha- you have a very endearing thing on stage, if that makes sense. And then your jokes are so good, well written. These compact, like, one liners with a bunch of tags is almost how I describe it. And I feel like when you get a bunch of those in a row with your character, with your, like, who you are, yeah. it's very endearing to the crowd. Have you ever gotten that though, where someone like compliments you, but it's like an insult at the same time? Oh, one all, time, the time. This, all the time. This like hillbilly kind of dude came up to me and he put his arm around me and he said, You know, when you first got up there in your flannel, I thought it was going to be a lot of tortilla jokes and abuelita, but it was really, really funny. And I'm like, That's Please so don't funny. touch me. Yeah, what well, can you? <laughs> yeah, you got like compliment assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> one time somebody came up there there's like early on too they're like that nervous thing you do on stage where you're all awkward and uncomfortable so good <laughs> <laughs> so good i was like what i don't i don't know so well 
But you yeah, never, yeah. I, I never think Jr. is. I've never seen him be nervous. Like him, him on saying, stage. Yeah, but but even you saying, oh, I was awkward with women. Like I have mm. Asperger, so uh, Jr. saying hi to a woman to me was like, oh my god, I want to be like that guy. Oh well, <laughs> I was for sure. Like I had a lot of stages of being awkward with women. Like I'm not. I wasn't really the guy to approach a woman at a bar, except for when I was like drinking heavily back in the day, and then. Um, you know, stuff like that. Whereas, and I can say that confidently because I've seen you, Diego, just approach someone in broad daylight and say something like, you look like a Disney princess or something. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. Taking it out of context. Of this man. We were at Disney World and she was wearing a tiara. Some would say... <laughs> That was not the context. It was like a it was like a grocery store at two p.m. <laughs> and someone say you have a little genius. Little genius. A little little genius. genius. Someone say that. That's funny. Um, I thought okay, he was so, gonna make an inappropriate three point one four reference. I was like, oh shit, Jr. is getting it. dirtier. <laughs> Um, that was a deep cut. That was that a was pie a joke. Pie reference. That was, that was a pie joke. <laughs> wow. <laughs> took a sec. It's a pie joke. He, yeah, let's he just, took a sec. He's like, can we just oh, honor that for a moment? He does have okay. Asperger's. Okay. Let's just have a moment for that <laughs> pie joke. That's so funny. You know what? People did it the more cop because my first year doing stand up, I couldn't look at the crowd. Like I would look down. And like even till like year three, like uh, people would think I would look at notes and stuff. And the more confident I got, then I started talking about Asperger's. But then people were like, "You don't really have it, do you?" No, I I made it up <laughs> I mean, so I can look do you cool. Think like of course, that'd be really interesting if you did make that up. Who would do that? Yeah, <laughs> like, that was well, like there's act. the guy. The p- people do shticks. Like there's Larry the Cable Guy. Diego's like Diego the Asperger's guy. I gotta act. I gotta act like it all times. I I don't remember how to act <laughs> normal. So but, crazy. but real talk, Diego, do you feel like stand up and performance has helped you as far as with any you know like challenges of like social cues or social? Oh, definitely, definitely. Like uh, Jr. Jr. and me and Jimmy, those are the like the two comics that we hang out all the time, and they they know my per- they know when I don't want to be in a crowd. Like I'll ask, I'll act disinterested. I'll pretend to sleep. I'm like I don't know if it's Asperger's or an asshole, but like, but if I <laughs> but if we're in a group and like they want to be out, I'm like I'll be out and blah blah blah. But it just depends on the circumstances. But I, I do feel like it helped. I, like some comics aren't the same they are on stage and off. And I feel like Jr. is, and me too. Like he'll tell you the way I am on stage. That's the way I am off stage. I don't feel like there's a mm-hmm. am, an illusion oh, to, you are. to yeah yeah. Well, I feel like um, another quality about you, uh, you know, is like I feel like you kind of you can't like you wear your emotions on your sleeve, like you can't l- fake liking someone or uh, or something that someone's done art wise yeah and you can't fake hating as well yeah oh totally uh someone yeah. someone someone tried to shake my hand once after they were talking about me and i went no i'm good and they got so upset i said i don't want to be fake and i just walked the other way <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i commend that honestly uh, yeah yeah no, it's yeah. It'll get totally. me into trouble for sure. It's not the the best. Award. But it is a skill because a lot of people, you know, it's like to a T of of uh, we all like can socially behave how we think we're supposed to. But like, oh, I should this. I should pretend to be this so that I can impress this person. But I don't think that you have that even the a- ability to fake your. <laughs> yeah, but but you know what's funny is I will tell this though the. the like when I drink, I can drink a lot, but JR will tell you, like, you can't really tell that I'm like, I've been drinking. Oh, My yeah. I can never tell when he's drunk. And it it's never changes. Weird. Yeah. It's the same. Interesting. Although it's a little bit, you're a little bit sassier, Diego. <laughs> I think. <laughs> a little bit sassier. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah. I remember your birthday. I was like, oh, he's for sure drunk. He's this little sassy boy. <laughs> but I'm still the best. I'm the best. I, I, uh, you know what's funny is that uh, mm-hmm. Jimmy said that too. One time I was tipsy. I, I, in 11 years, I've been tipsy on stage five times. And mm-hmm. I did a long set. And our friend Jimmy was like, dude, I like you when you're a little bit buzzed. I was like, why? He's like, you're on it. Like, if a joke doesn't work, you're like, well, these are the jokes. Let's keep rolling. He's like, you're like, yeah. you don't give a shit. You're like, you just keep going. 
<laughs> no, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to try. We usually do the musical storytelling thing, but with um piano. I want to try it with a guitar today. Okay. Oh. So I like kind of we've kind of been on the theme of um, you know, the spectrum and all that stuff. Um, let's do this. Um, Diego. Um, so with, did you have any stories of like, how did you, how did you even find out like that you might be on the spectrum and all that stuff? How, how old were you? Well, I, we've, we've discussed this before. Like my parents didn't, well, I was always like ADHD and all these things. They said I should get tested. They didn't test me at an early age. They're like, nah, he's, he's fine or whatever. And then like when I was 17, they're like, okay, we're going to test them because it's like i found out later in life but like that's not even uh I, th I think it's a culture thing though it's like a latino in the early 90s like oh he might have something like adhd no we're good he's he's this fine. feels like yeah with the music now i've realized i've just turned this into a psa like so it does sound like a psa it's sad it should be I feel a black like and a, white <laughs> the, yeah. it's like it's like the autistic arms of an angel like this is Instead of a sad guys, puppy, you can it's donate. Me. Someone's gonna <laughs> to Diego at the end of this show. Venmo. <laughs> These for the price of a cup of coffee, you can for the feed price him. of a coloring book, you could save. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buy his buy him coloring books. <laughs> but but so it's like that thing where it's like you. Uh, but I think that's just a because people nowadays are more aware of their kids and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and they're they uh, people still don't want to accept those things, and they look at them. But there's more help with people on the spectrum yeah. with people with allergies like allergies i didn't even, when i was growing up i didn't even know like kids were allergic to shit like i like that's not something like allergies sprung up early 2000s like i didn't know anyone allergic to a peanut or gluten when i was a kid how did it how died. did it manifest itself <laughs> yeah they're, they're gone <laughs> Just, did you hear? Did you hear about Tom? He ate a lunchable <laughs> snack. Oh shit! Yeah, we're going on the on that same thread of just this is gonna be a sad song storytelling yeah. thing. Let's just let's just dedicate this to all the people who have died from peanut allergies. Look, look how disinterested he is when it's not about sex or penis. Look at him. He's just like I don't want to say. I about said this. peanuts. Diego. <laughs> peanuts. It's about peanuts. It'll get um, there. So, how did, yeah, we'll, we'll find the penis thing in this. <laughs> Or the penis will find you. <laughs> um, I, that how did that was aggressive, this, dude? Jr. Don't get did, canceled, bro. How did I that manifest you. itself for you, Diego? Just growing up in like social interactions. Did you did you ever notice it, or like how is that how is that for you? I found I didn't connect with kids unless they had a offbeat sense of humor, or like if someone tried to bully me, then like I would totally deflect. Like I would. I would I would go back at him, and I do think that's something where, even though I didn't really know who I was, I've always known that about me. Like if someone's mean to me or someone I care about, I can be mean, or I use humor to deflect things, or like Jr. catches on. Like I, whenever someone annoys me, like I'll say, "Oh, that's funny," but I'll say it like in a tone that it's not. Uh, I either mean it in the literal term that it's funny, or like, "Oh, this is ironic. I don't like it." Yeah, it's whenever like, Diego says. Uh, he'll tell me a thing like, oh, yeah, this person stole my joke. Isn't that funny? <laughs> like, and I'll always say, Diego, I don't think you really think that's funny. He's like, well, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you mean you hate them. Yeah. That's what you mean by funny. Yeah. It can be very confusing. But yeah. All right, Diego, how about this? Let's do another story here. Um, do you have a story? On, like, do you have a favorite road story to tell? Because I feel like we just are full of just road experiences together um me and him have partied so much i feel like we've told it so many times but also too like i i do like like that thing where it's like uh we could we know each other like he he was joking but like one like like we do know each other like an old married couple because like i knew when jr got drunk back in the day i would have to chase him i would have to he would That's literally run all the time and make me chase him to go get him <laughs> Run? Yeah. Why, like, why, why, yeah. Do you want to tell that? that Arizona story, Diego? On I know, but I'm just, I was just saying that in general, like who's athletic, who wants to be athletic when they're <laughs> hammered? Like that's, he would be stretching and just make me run. And stretching. I was 300 pounds. I was 300 I would pounds. run. That's true. I, yeah, I was a big boy. I couldn't keep up. Yeah. We had some good times, man. But what, what's one of the fun, uh, let's, th let's think of a, 
What's a fun, you know, our first time in Vegas, we, we don't really talk about this. So like Jimmy took us and then he stayed at the prim and me and JR got to go out and it was just fun. Like we were, we bought like a 24 pack of beer and we're handing oh, it out to servicemen. this was a crazy men. one to pick, Diego. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> that's not why I picked it. I was No, 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 everything. go for it. I like it. Keep, tell the story on here. Let's oh, do it. So... <laughs> <laughs> is this what is it what i'm thinking or no well, well, it, where were you going i'll just let you go i was there. going so he was handing out we were handing out beers to service men and i didn't know you can drink like on the strip and we just had a good time and then we just uh yeah it was just fun like being like two young comics and be like oh this is so like he says like what I'm, like we Comics are, Jimmy's always helped us and like I, when I'm able to, and now JR is like, hey, do you want to go to DC or do you want to go here? I'm like, yeah. So it's cool to build those friendships that aren't just like business in, in comedy. Yeah, for sure. I love how you totally friend, yeah. avoided that entire story. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I don't man. want you to be like, Ronnie, stop recording. Let I mean, we talk. can cut stuff out of this. You always cut stuff out. <laughs> like I'm like oh interesting story and he's like hey, you know I just loved like the idea of traveling in general <laughs> that's, that's cool. and just the idea of friendship in general you know what I mean <laughs> I will right. say this we don't I have will, to tell that story on here I will say that was this. musical storytelling without a, a single story <laughs> oh I, I was I was oh I was gonna say this though Jr. when he gets drunk he's as yeah. smooth as champagne dog like it was it was and like drop money, get chocolate strawberries. This dude was a baller. That's why I'm Do sober you? for my own good. No. <laughs> <laughs> I need the context yeah. here. Yeah, Diego was just saying every time I would drink, I would try to I would take advantage of him. <laughs> yeah. What do you feel so, like is next for you post pandemic? Um, both just creatively working and, on an album, trying to compete in that, and then just create content and stuff like that. Should we try to get Diego canceled? <laughs> I, if if this episode hasn't already, there's gonna. <laughs> All right, let's see this. Gonna get Diego canceled. He's gonna get canceled. I'm gonna get him canceled with Diego Curiel. So Diego, you you hate Asians. What <laughs> what is what does that stem from for you? Tell us about that. Is it? Uh, yeah. I don't know who Googled me, but that's inaccurate. <laughs> uh, well, I, I just remember you talking about that the other day off of the podcast. And so I thought I'd bring it up. On here, so. <laughs> so this is what it feels like when the other person makes something up. I know. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not. It's not one of those at all. It's just a thing that you said and it's factual. That's not even. <laughs> so, like I was talking about stopping Asian hate and then you were like, should we? Was I this, remember that. What was this was this when we were when we were eating delicious ramen at that ramen house? Exactly. Yeah. And it just for some reason made you furious. <laughs> Do you remember some that? <laughs> yeah. We were just eating ramen and you're getting more mad the whole time. No, no that's not even first of all, that's not even true. I love I love ramen. I love I love yeah. everything. There is so no why, Asian why, hate. why are you? But really, though, no, in all seriousness, though, why are you against gay marriage? <laughs> <laughs> what is it about the union between just same-sex couples? That you I, have? I, I didn't say gay marriage. I just said you proposing to me. I'm not for. That's <laughs> yeah, and, and that was pretty upsetting for me as well. Because even just as your friend, bro, we've been friends for ten years. And you wouldn't even consider that. <laughs> I that's that to me is homophobic. So. <laughs> that's hilarious. You've just been canceled. <laughs> You're a homophobe. Diego's been canceled. Never gonna work in Hollywood. Can we go back to singing <laughs> Little Genius Big Penis? I, oh, I like that took better? a turn. <laughs> Cause the, the in in Spanish doesn't that mean little genius big pineapple? <laughs> you got a big piña. Oh damn! Little genius, got a big genius. What? He's on the spectrum. Diego Curiel. Dude, I love this song. Uh, Ronnie's like, if this ear worm holes in my ear, I'm gonna kill both of you. <laughs> do you ever? Do I you ever? It. Do you ever hear a song that like ear like gets in your ear and you're just like get out of the Baby Shark? I fucking hate that song and it'll always oh, yeah. get sung. Or like yeah, anything on like a lot of stuff on TikTok. It's like designed for that. 
Yeah, yeah exactly. Because it's, it's to crazy. get you in like 15 seconds and repeatable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I almost wonder if there's an algorithm to make an earworm. That was song. I was thinking that. You think so, you, you know? Yeah, like because what is is it like a certain type of melody or a certain type of chord progression or something? Because like I don't know. So Bella Porsche just put out a song. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Like found out she sang, and then but her song is also like super earwormy, right? So someone mm-hmm. had to design that to be able to make it earwormy, and for TikTok, right? Like yeah, it's all designed, totally. right? Like somebody else wrote it. I'm assuming she didn't write. I it. assume so. Tara, what would you do if that if if uh, at or organizations for the spectrum heard that song and said, "Can we use this as it goes viral?" As I a would theme? proudly. <laughs> be a part of that movement probably, dude. <laughs> little genius big penis think of how many how many people need to hear that right now t-shirts <laughs> how many t-shirts yeah <laughs> little genius in the front big penis in the back <laughs> what do you feel like is your little genius diego if you had a if you had something that you're more like is like a special talent that you're i will at. say like uh linguistics or not like other just Word like play? Yeah, wordplay or like I never had to study for like English in high school and all the white kids would always copy off me. And I felt like it was ironic, but it made me feel like I like wordplay and like joke play and like mm-hmm. stuff like that. I, I like doing like it, it, I will say it's like, oh, it's like retaining stuff. Like, I, I just like being creative or trying to be although sometimes mm-hmm. I can't verbalize my the joke I want to like. It's just figuring out how to get there. Gotcha. Okay. Well, well, with your let's use your little talent. Um, your little ta- everything's little or big right now. <laughs> little talent, big penis. So what? Uh, what else would you want to hear in this song? Like if we, you know, if we did more verses and all that stuff. Because I think what we're gonna do is, as we, what do you think about? It? Like, well, I, this is behind the scenes stuff of the pod, but we're gonna finish the song and maybe release it all at the end or like the week that we released the episode, I could like finish each song. But what else, what else do you hear in this song with your wordplay, Diego? You got any, got any spectrum? I don't know if you can add, I would do a joke that would say, I feel like wordplay is foreplay for nerds. A E I O. Ooh. I like that. (laughs) Ooh, I like that. I almost want to add it right now, but we will wait. <laughs> I like hey, how JR, hey, JR, JR's doing voice acting. He's gone from either like inappropriate to like central mm-hmm. or like that. We're going to get you canceled. I'm like, why is he talking gonna like get Batman get right now? <laughs> Diego got canceled. <laughs> like Batman. He sounds like <laughs> Gary Busey and Christian Bale. <laughs> I think that voice is just somebody who's like been through the shit, you know? It's like a film noir detective <laughs> who just like he's he's seen murders, he's seen rapes. This guy nothing gets past him. Diego got canceled. Another yeah. one canceled. I've seen rape, I've seen murder, but you're definitely going to get canceled. Damn, We're going to catch you, buddy. <laughs> you can run. You can hide, but your homophobia ends now. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that's cool, man. Diego, this this is just flying by, bro. Yeah, I know. I bring that up because I have to pee. <laughs> no, okay. He's wrapping it up. I get Are it. Are we able to? Can I run and pee, or should I? Should I just? Can we do that? Yeah. Get, you can, we can edit that, right? Yeah. We'll pretend like it never happened. We can make it. Ronnie's Actually, like, never happened. You know I get a pee. All right. P two movement. Sorry. The P two movement. P oh. two. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll, I will keep talking. Um. I will interview myself as this happens. Uh, this is hilarious. This is... So, Diego, uh, in 1998, you played Pokemon Yellow. Can you... Do... <laughs> oh, man, this is good. Um, I'll just wait for them. I can't carry an interview by myself. Who would do that? That's... I don't have Elon Musk confidence. <laughs> What's up, doggy? That was a quick pee, dog. Little genius. What a big genius. We're back. Finished at the same time. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's good timing, Ronnie. I thought, Diego, I thought you were going to go. <laughs> You're just oh, sitting no, here by no. yourself. I felt bad. 
No, I feel like it's with. I feel like the questions for you, Diego, that I have, it's interesting because it's all stuff I already know about you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just bring up old conversations that we've had. Yeah. No, it's good. But um, I guess speaking of that, old conversations that we've had. Well, do you have, I think we've had this talk too about like, um, what, do you think you would ever move to like LA for comedy or are you, are you, do you want to stay in Sacramento? Yeah, I move for LA. I, I think when it opens up more and things look whatever, but it, as far as that, now the pandemic did force like try for me anyways, trying to create content uh, that wasn't pure stand up, and it, yeah. it was something out of the comfort zone, but I think it is good for all comics to like, but you've been doing that already, like script writing or, sure. Or sketches. Or what are what like are that. some of the other creative things that you like to do outside of stand up? Um, trying to write, like learn how to do scripts, podcasts, um, just reading. Uh, I know it doesn't look like it, but I read. I like reading sometimes. Um, yeah. Just like just stuff out of the comfort zone. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like you're, like that. Like the music stuff you do is good because it reminds me like when I did theater. They would, because uh, I used to be really shy, so they would do this thing called park bench, and you would like be a character, and then someone would show up, and then mm -hmm. you guys would do a combo, and then you'd leave, and then someone else would come in, and it'd be cool. It's like what like, you do at the dog park with hot women that you see with the that's dogs. That's not what I did. <laughs> Every time you go to the dog park, I just assume you're trying to pick up girls. That's so funny. <laughs> I always, he texted me the other day, he's like, hey, I'm going to go to the dog park with my dog. I was like, you're just trying to hound on women? <laughs> <laughs> I'm... I like how me trying to be healthy is like, a, oh, you're trying no. to get women. It was actually a very wholesome event, though. We met up with my parents. You and I, we all we had walked. milk, delicious milk tea. I love that. Oh, my that. God. It was so good. Bober yeah. Tea. This is a future sponsor of this podcast, Bober Tea, if they're okay with me. Dude, you saying Bober sounded like a like a NRA person trying to say Boba. Yeah, I thought you were saying Boba wrong. I was like, that's not right. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like, wait, this whole time has JR not been Asian? Yeah, I was like, what? Oh, I know what Boba is. Oh, Boba. Boba. <laughs> that um, Boba tea. That Boba tea, little bit of Boba tea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> JR, JR the cable guy just came out. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> get her done. Boba tea. Let's <laughs> have get her done. My slogan is Boba tea. <laughs> But it was so good, that boba that we had. And um, I feel like even on my birthday, you know, one of my favorite things to do on my birthday is get introspective. It's not even party. And uh, Diego and I have had just many a deep talk. <laughs> Sounds like, like a great a party. Talk, <laughs> yeah, it's like you guys just, you're like, yeah, JR, what do you want to do? And it's like, can you believe how far we've come? Dude, it was amazing. The, the, the other day we were, we were having deep talks, and he, had this, he has this amazing poetry book. He's like, pick a number between one and 400 and i'm like oh 187 like the autism just hit That's me true. and then he put his and it was like a deep ass poem it was dope I was yeah like, it's oh. a real thing i do i have this book of poetry by this guy named hafiz I, I don't know fully the history of him it's like a sufi master whatever that means and uh i will talk to somebody so diego will call me and I'm like diego pick a number between 40 and 300 and then whatever number he picks i read a poem from that page yeah, that's it's our a great friendship. party, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's the party. All right, who's next? Who's who else wants a poem? Huh? Ronnie, Ronnie's like, where's the Uno, the pin, the tail, and the dot? Yeah, my just... my birthday is just so selfishly just things I would do when I'm by myself. They're like, all right, can we get a drink, Jar? It's like, oh, I don't drink. Yeah, but can I have a drink? Yeah, but I I don't drink. So yeah, it's my birthday. <laughs> my birthday, so yeah, you're gonna do what I do. <laughs> Diego, let's let's do a compliment compliment um, rally off for you because the other cool thing about Diego and I's friendship is one day Diego called me in the morning. I just woke up. I'm in bed. He's like, Hey man, are you at home? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, I got you something from this thrift store. I'm like, what? Okay. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to just drop it off. And he shows up at my door with this like framed canvas quote. And the quote just says, enjoy the little things. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair it was 2 p.m when he woke up i it's not that it was I pretty late. hella early it, was pretty late. <laughs> it wasn't 2 p.m dear you're exaggerating but the, the, it was, it was 2 p.m right now okay buddy? it was it was past brunch though it wasn't breakfast hours something like, something like. 
That's but so yeah, man, that's like, like we have a like I feel like our friendship. It's like we got a deep bond, man. You're just a good, loyal friend. And and I know that you're not like just a yes man. This is a comp- compliment. Ten minute. Yeah. Ten minute compliment. Oh, no, I don't. You're not. I, a don't yes, like... I know that if I ask you about something, you're not just going to be like, yeah, it's good because it's because you're my friend. Like, mm-hmm. I know you'll tell me if something's bad or whatever. So you're just a good friend, man. And well, he also uh-huh. gave me a, a ring. Oh, dude. friendship ring that see he's wearing that one on his neck he gave me one too because you gave it what was the story do you gave it to your well, five friends i was like four people that were really there during and that are close to me during my dad's death so i was wearing a gold ring but my dad passed away in december i gave mm-hmm. it to him so he can take but then i'm like a marvel nerd and i saw the tony stark reactor rings and i got five and i was like well, these four people were really there for me during my dad's passing. And I, I just like, like uh, the, the closest ones got the glowing rings. But then the fifth ring, I, I gave it to someone who was there too. But it's like, they're, they're like important to me. So I was like, you know, this is a way to remember my dad and then just like always have my friends and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So, And I really respect too. I feel like how you handle a lot of hardships during the last year. It was like on top of the background of, the world pandemic and everything going crazy i feel like you had to deal with you know the passing of your dad you had some other you know things going on in your life too that i felt like you just handled really well and like leaned into being there for other people at that time yeah i think well i will say this about asperger's i don't think it fully processed at that point and there were points where it's like it's definitely within the last few months hit harder at some points so it's like mm-hmm. a up and down process of trying to process it but also realizing that like i don't want to accept this thing and it's less like Mm. how do i bleed that into still be funny because i'm still doing shows and i no one wants to hear someone go like oh for 30 minutes it's like you got to be funny and yeah that's what i remember now too because that was that was around the same time you got injured you hurt your knee and then so you couldn't work and you, you lost your job at that time too and so it was like all this stuff going on at the same time and I feel like um, you just, you're just st- like your spirit has always been like good through that stuff. Like you well, also too, JR that. wanted to bring that story where I got injured up because he heroically jumped in uh, to save me. I, my knee snapped while we were. It's not paddle- why I brought it up, but you can, we were paddleboarding, <laughs> and he he jumped in because I was drowning. You can tell the story waited. where I saved your life like a hero. <laughs> Didn't even hesitate. <laughs> He, no, he Go hesitated. Ahead, there had to be no. a woman passing. There were two That's hot true, girls. Actually. That and he's like, oh, okay. I, I waited. Guess I- <laughs> they were in in sight. They were too far to even see that I jumped in. At that point, it just looks like what we're both swimming together. That's yeah. not what's happening, ladies. I am saving this man's life. And I needed them to get close enough to witness yeah, it. Yeah, that, so that part's true. But That's I knew you'd be okay if I waited 10 more seconds. <laughs> like, he'll live. Well, the problem was... I- like I used to be way heavier, so I got a life jacket, but I didn't realize it was loose. And this fucking life jacket kept going over me, and my 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 leg completely snapped, so I couldn't swim with this side of my body. So mm-hmm. it was yeah. It was, so yeah, yeah, we were paddle boarding. I do feel bad because I did save your life. I'll say that much, and I'll take oh yeah, I'll take that credit humbly. I saved your life, Diego, and you owe your life to me. Yeah, but. Second thing is I'm also the one that invited you to go paddle boarding. So yeah. it's, kind of, it's, kind of, it's kind of on me. It's kind of on me a little bit. I'll admit that. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was like, dude, you want to go paddle boarding? He's like, I don't know. Is it fun? I was like, dude, it's so fun. You're going to love it. Super dangerous. <laughs> super dangerous. Jared, yeah, tell him how stubborn I was, though. After I recovered at your house, we still went out for dinner. And oh, my gosh. I was... Diego still wanted to go out. and Well, because well, I felt bad. And I was like, let's go out. And yeah. Yeah, and you're hobbling over. What a sight. What a sad but heroic sight. It was like a Rudy moment to see Diego hobbling over to go hit on women. It was so beautiful to see just how much hope carried him 30 feet to go talk to a woman across the bar. Hey, don't let this humble act fool you. He was like, do you guys have a hero sub here? And they're like, we have regular subs. He's like, well, technically any sub I order is a hero sub. Oh. I see JR. pie jokes and sandwich jokes. <laughs> That's where we're at today. Let's have a moment for that one. That's funny. <laughs> moment for the sandwich joke. No, I was. I remember. I was like, Diego, aren't you tired? Don't you want to go home? And he's like, No, we're gonna go out to the bar. 
I don't think I had that much bass in my voice, but yeah. No. <laughs> I was yeah. like, damn. We're going to go out to the bar. That's funny. We're going to hit all these women. Now. Yeah, That's but you were like, nothing was stop- nothing's going to stop you, man. <laughs> don't stop me now. That's, what <laughs> Queen. that's so funny. But, uh, uh, but no, yeah, that's that's how, like, be, doing comedy too, JR will tell you early on, it's like, you'll take whatever and you'll be on the road a lot sometimes. And even now you'll be on the road, but like, uh, you'll miss stuff with family and whatever. Like me and him have, our families have been out of town and we've done like Thanksgiving together, like, uh, or Christmas and shit like that. So it's, yeah, it, man, it's cool. It's, I really do consider you, you know, one of my best friends, both in comedy and outside of comedy. And it's just a pleasure talking to you here as well, man. I don't know. Uh, I'm saying that because I I think we're done with time. <laughs> yeah, Ron, Ron, yeah. I saw Ronnie go like Ronnie went. Ronnie went. Ronnie's like wrap it up, dude. <laughs> wrap, wrap it up. It up. Dude. I'm like, dude, Diego, you're just one of my best friends. I would usually never say that, but we got to wrap up a podcast. That's so funny. <laughs> no, man, truly though, dude, it's like I, I, if I can show anybody anything from having you as a guest on this podcast, it's just you're an amazing dude, and I feel lucky to have you as a friend, man. Seriously. Say, man, I, I feel very lucky and I appreciate both of you having me on here. And I, I hope Ronnie doesn't have to edit too much. And uh, if he's yeah, editing anything, it's editing my, my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you sounded great on this. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thanks, Diego. Where can they find you? Uh, they can find me at Awkward Diego on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Diego Curiel on YouTube. And I have stuff on iTunes and stuff like that. Awesome. Well, everyone, check him out. He's a funny guy. Check him out live and um, and and uh, anywhere else you can find him. Yeah. Hulu and Amazon as well, right? Yes. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Diego. Thank and let's guys. just listen to your beat one more time uh-huh. as we as we leave. Let's close this out. Ooh, he's got a little genius, but a big penis. He's on the spectrum. Diego Curry. Thanks, Diego. Thanks, JR. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. Wow. What a great episode. That had everything. I'm not even going to say what it had, but it had a lot of things. You know? We made a song about the spectrum. We learned about the spectrum. Little genius. Big penis. What a great song. Guys, go check out. There's We're going to have exclusive content on the Patreon. You can get behind the scenes where we break down the episode. And we just break down emotionally. A lot happens on there, and you can only see that if you pay for some exclusive content. But you'll probably see that happening after a show as well. Yeah, check out the socials. We got Patreon, the YouTube, the Spotify, the Instagram, the the Mammogram. We got everything. So go check it out. We usually fade off with a conversation with Ronnie and I just talking about some nonsense, and then just fade it out right when it gets weird. So he's not here, so I'm just going to talk, you know? Um, theft, dude. My stuff got stolen and it feels like emotionally I've been violated. And uh, is that similar to 